All right, class. So here's the follow-up tutorial on Inkscape. Um, the first portion, you should be able to get to this part right now, uh, where you have a vector file based on an image. Um, next up, here's a few tips and tricks that I would recommend using um, kind of going forward, especially if you want to customize your uh, vector file. OK, so uh, where we last left off, we got to this point where it's now a vector. If I double click on it, you'll see all of the points that the in this case, quick imagery or maybe laser cutter uh, would follow along those points. And now we're going to do a couple additions. All right. So first off, uh, something that I would typically add, especially for something vinyl, is uh, maybe a box to go around your objects. Now, uh, the reason why I would want to add this is if I have this cut out with a box as well, it gives me an option of um, instead of just removing the outside portions, I can actually move the interior of the vinyl, and that would give me kind of something to work with from the inside. So it really just depends on what you're going for. Um, make this the proper size. You can do the same deal on the top left-hand corner. Um, you can mess around with the sizing. So for example, if I wanted it to be, I don't know, four by two, let's see how that turns out. Four by two instead, then I have that to work with. Okay, next up, you might be thinking, hey, the alignment's not exactly where I want it to be. Uh, and if you're just kind of eyeballing, it's hard to get it centered. So what I would do next is come over here to object, align and distribute. And at this point, um, if you hold down shift while clicking, you can click on multiple parts. And then you can kind of, depending on what you're trying to line up, in this case, for example, I might want to do center line up this way as well as lining it across that way. And then right now, um, my object will be in the center of the rectangle. So that's a, uh, just a nice little tip if you wanna kind of get things lined up. I definitely use that align and distribute. Okay, one thing also I should mention is uh, the fill and stroke right now in the rectangle. I think I had preset this since that's what I came out, uh, but you may need to come over to this top left-hand side, do fill and stroke. And you might need to come over here and uh, remove the fill. I like to keep the stroke at all the way red. And then stroke style, to keep it consistent, I would use the same width, um, 0 0.003 inch after every time. Uh, so that's kind of how you could set that. OK. Um, next up is adding some custom text. right? So if I have this um, create and edit text object, uh, you'll see there's some other options you can, you know, freehand draw, make spirals, different shapes. Uh, but the one I like to use is create these text objects. Um, so when I first make this, and let's just say uh, I'm adding my name to my design. Right, so I've got that right there. If I click off from it. Right now, uh, unlike these other objects, I double click, it gives me those points that the machine, CNC machine, would follow. However, if I click on the text right now, all it does is edit the text box. Okay, so I need to make this so that it actually has a path for our machines to follow. So if I click on my text box right now, come over here to path, I'm gonna choose this option right here, object path. So object path, after I click this, if I double click now on my piece, zoom in a little bit, I can see that it's actually now a path for the CNC machine to, to work with. All right, so that's, that's a nice little touch as well. So I definitely recommend that. At that point, again, I have to make it into a red outline. You can clearly see what it's gonna cut. I'll highlight over all those parts, come back over to the fill and stroke. And now I'm gonna remove the fill, Add the stroke, make it red, and then stroke style. I'm going to make that the same width as the other one, 0 0.003. And hit enter. Right, and now I've got that all split up. Right? So uh, at this point, if I wanted to, I can also make my box a little bigger. Uh, go ahead and click and drag this, bring this together. If these aren't staying together, you can also have this option under path to combine them, make sure that they're all stuck together. All right, and then finally, I might come back over here to alignment, um, align and distribute. 
And I want to make sure that that's centered. So I'll click that option. Um, sorry, with the other guys. Again, I'm holding down shift to select multiple and then line that up. Now everything should be lined up. All right, so those are just a few tips uh, of how to get that set up. If you want to make some more custom graphics, feel free to play around with that. Uh, you can even bring in more images. And so that's kind of a few tips to get going on Inkscape and creating your own custom files. Uh, last thing I might mention actually before I sign off is uh, if I double click on any part, these little dots, if something's not exactly where you line, want them lined up to, like for example, if I wanted this actually to be a little flatter, all these points can be manipulated. Uh, they can even be removed, for example, let's say, um, I don't know, instead of my entire name here, let's say I'm like, oh, I don't want that period anymore. So then if I double click here and I highlight over these points, let me zoom in a little bit. If I highlight over these points and delete them, uh, I can delete kind of little parts. And even more so, if it's an image, I might be able to remove certain parts depending on what I'm trying to do. All right, that's, uh, that's it for this tutorial. If you have any more questions, feel free to reach out.